Hello students, I hope you're enjoying the course of Wicca 101. The first time I heard about the five elements was when I had to uh, take a massage course uh, to get my license in the state of Florida to be an MLT with um, Eastern uh, background. And um, of course I have heard about the five elements and of course I knew about earth, fire, water, spirit because of um, you know, if you have read philosophy before, or um, if you were interested in chemistry or alchemy, then you probably know a little bit about it. But I really didn't know all the history that was behind it. And um, I didn't even know that um, Wicca or witchcraft um, had taken or um, uh, shared with other things such as uh, Jewish tradition or Kabbalistic tradition um, that uh, have things in common. So. I'm going to go through um, the five elements, but very basic idea because um, each one of them um, we can actually cover. We could go through so much on each of the elements and uh, from the point of Kabbalah, from the point of Chinese medicine, uh, from the point of vibration, vibratory frequencies. There's so many things that we can talk about the five elements. So we're going to talk about earth and earth corresponds to the physical earth, of course. And um, this is the, the world that we live in most of the time, right? We spend uh, our time sometimes in our thoughts or in brilliant emotion, but we always need food, shelter, and clothing. So some pertinent topics that you can grab out in your book of shadows, if you, regard, if you have one, is what would you your life be if you had had all the shelter food and health income and positions that you need what could you then turn your attention to and um, the earth symbol also represents uh, grounding and centering so grounding and centering if you never heard about grounding and centering some people call it meditation but grounding involves going to a place outdoors in nature uh, such as a uh, nearby park or countryside and find a quiet place to see. And simply sit and let the sight, sounds, and the smells and energy of nature flow through you. And breathe the air and trace the outline of a nearby leaf with your fingertip. Feel the ground beneath your feet and just be. Then reach out to the rocks and plants and animals of this place and listen for any messages that they might give you. This is called grounding. So pretty much the earth element is helping us with our connection to all nature. If you are um, a beginning witch, grounding is the first magic. Um, we recommend grounding and meditation, the first thing that you should learn. Um, you should use also this with every magical act or spell that you perform and the frequency in every day helps with many different things. Uh, not only it has um, a spiritual connection and results but also can have a lot of the physical connections for example lowering your blood pressure. Also, this is called centering, and it is the second half of grounding. So grounding and centering. You normally should do this before every ritual in all magic. It is good to record your experience after every meditation uh, in your book of shadows. And if you do this consistently, you will notice different things every time that you do centering and grounding. So what do you see? What do you feel? Uh, what do you hear, taste, or touch that was different from the way that you usually feel? As you go doing this meditation sessions or grounding sessions, uh, do you feel more open? Is your mind more clear or, or, or less clear to the clutter from the outside? Now, if you want to find a little bit about all find a little about earth you could do research about the five elements of course or uh, familiarize yourself with the geology of the region i um i started taking herbalism course and i ended up with my master's in herbalism because i was trying to find inner peace and also to increase my health and 
um, these were, you know, you'll see that as you take these courses, as you center and ground and um, start training or eating organic um, or starting to do or go vegetarian, whatever you want to do, um, you will feel different and um, you will see how the earth element gets into your life. Some witches might join organizations uh, such as GreenAmericaToday.org to be connected to the best green living. Uh, you can go to the National Green Pages in which it's full of green vendors from everything from advertising to wine and beer. Um, exercise is also important and uh, do an inventory of your wealth according to the pentagram. And um, this also feeds into our energy and vitality and also our love and intuition. Now let's talk about air. Air is the wind from soft breezes to hurricane gales, um, the air that we breathe to survive in the carbon dioxide to oxygen cycle of the plants around us. Air is also corresponds to our thoughts and intellect and imagination. Without these three, we will not be able to appreciate the world of or create magic. So, we recommend as exercise for air to go to a place with clean air or open sky, uh, ground and center, of course, and then breathe. Yoga is a practice that um, allows the air part of the pentagram or the of elemental air to be able to affect your consciousness and open your imagination, open the fair eye and your intellect. Think about the air that you breathe. How do you contribute to air pollution or how do you cut back into riding a bike sometimes instead of a car? Um, so here you can think about environmental themes. You can join um, the Nature Conservancy or the World Wildlife Federation. So we're going to talk about environmental things here. And then fire. So fire is the smallest candle flame. Although there's different types of fire, if you take my alchemy course, you will learn more about the five elements. The deep heat of the Earth's core is what we are talking here which is the tertiary fire. Fire corresponds to our desires and passions and our will, our purpose, our goals. It is the energy that animates us in all living things. So you can do grounding and take a deep breath and then focus on fire, will, passion, and purpose. Do you want more of them in your life? What is your passion? What is your contribution to the world? You can always, as you go through the five elements in the pentagram and think about which you want to represent, you can write on your book of shadows. It is important to know how to be a witch in the world, living in the world. So think about how you use your energy every day. Go to the internet, search for a better car that leaves a smaller carbon footprint. As you can see, we're going through everything and we're thinking about nature and the environment. Let's go with water. The water element is the mist, the rain, the snow, the streams that flow to the rivers, into the oceans, uh, glaciers, and even the blood that runs through our veins and the tears we cry, all of that are water. We will say 75% of the body are made of water and some say that our emotions let us know that we are alive and intuition is our direct connection to the divine. You can go to the ocean or stay out on your porch during a rainstorm while you hold a cup of coffee. You can also de do some deep breath and meditate in water. A 
And finally, the spirit. The spirit is embodied in other four elements and transcends them as well. For the spirit is the goddess and the god, and all they have created is imbued within the energy. For this, I uh, like to go to different old churches or places of worship. And when I mean places of worship, they don't. it doesn't really mean that it has to be a place that is a Catholic, Catholic Episcopalian cathedral or a church. But you can also go to places such as Stonehenge or, um, you know, any burial site, cemeteries, anything that for you feels sacred to you. Where and when do you feel the most in touch with your spirit? When do you feel all peace, connection, belonging, and joy? If it's a place you can go in person, go there at least once a month to renew your spirit. If you can't go there in person, take a trip with your imagination. Now, almost every witch has an altar, and we're going to talk about the witch's altar and symbols. You're going to learn a little bit about each one of them in the next module.